Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 75 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here today. Today is a... wait. No. Welcome to new viewers and a big welcome back to returning viewers. Today is a beautiful, beautiful, sunny and warm and just beautiful Thursday in May, where I'm coming to you from here on the Northern California coast. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast that you should totally go check out and join if you haven't yet. It's where you'll find show notes for most episodes and make-along info. We do have two make-alongs happening right now. Uh, one is the Spring Sweater Cal, and that is where you can make sweaters along with us this spring. Uh, so that's running through the whole entirety of spring until June when it becomes summer and then I will be drawing prizes from the Ravelry FO thread and the hashtag on Instagram. We also have the Fiber Along 2019 and info on that is available in the Ravelry group as well. Hashtag on Instagram and the Ravelry group. Also, I'm going to be drawing prizes from both of those. Sentences? Much? And that's it for the uh, make-alongs. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. Thank you for everybody who's participating so far in both of those make-alongs. It is awesome, and I love it. Okay. Moving on to what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Like a Cloud cardigan by Hohi Locatelli, and I love this cardigan. I am also wearing a hand-sewn garment underneath that I will get to in the sewing segment later in the episode. Um, but it's something I'm really excited about. I have like so many FOs. Like, you want to see some FOs? This is the episode for you. I got like all the FOs this episode. Where are you going to find all the FOs? Right here. So the first FO that I have is a pair of socks. It's the Aquarian socks. This is a knit out of Moonstone Dye Works, which is my hand dye yarn company, in the BFL sock base in the Aquarian colorway. And here is the second one. And I finished them. And I'm stoked. So I did just a plain stockinette sock, and I did a 64 stitch cast on top down, two by two ribbing for the cuff. Heel flap and gusset with a slip stitch heel flap, which is my favorite. And I did a pretty standard wedge toe on these and they fit really great. I like them. I used a size zero needle, which is kind of my newish technique that I am going with. And I really, really like them. They fit really good. They have a denser fabric and a kind of more give in the sock than my old socks. I used to do a size one needle with a 56 stitch count and um, these are much more comfortable and wearable and easy to get on and off. One of my kind of big gripes about hand knit socks up until this point is that I couldn't take them off with my feet. <laughs> so um, I really like it when my socks are really easy to get off because in the middle of the night if I'm wearing them and I don't want to wear socks anymore I usually take them off with my toes. Is that weird? Is that too much info? I don't know. But um, I don't like to like reach down in with my hands and you know finagle them off when I'm like half asleep. So that's always kind of been a gripe with my hand knit socks is that I they're not that easy to get off. But these are way easier to get off so I really like this new technique. I'm totally going to stick with it. I'm super happy with it. And they fit great. So the Aquarian colorway is this kind of tonal speckled greenish tealish color and I really love it. That is them. They're done. My next FO is also a pair of socks. What? These are my cat sandwich fiber socks and these got put on hold back in February so that I could start my Aquarian socks. And uh, once they were done, I picked these back up and finished them so fast. So when I abandoned these, 
Um, the first sock was like here. Oh, I'm sorry. The first sock was done. The second sock was about here. So I did all this um, since I picked it up and they are done. And that is awesome. The yarn for this is Cat Sandwich Fibers and the colorway is Saltwater Taffy 2.0. And it's like the Merino Nylon Base. I don't know what it's called. And I love these so much. Same exact recipe as my last socks. And these are, this is just like my dream yarn. It's so pretty. It's pinks and then like these dingy speckles and I love it so much. And again, they fit awesome. Uh, something that's interesting about uh, different sock yarns is some of them are thinner than others, as you might know if you've experimented a lot with sock yarns, especially hand dyed sock yarns. Um, there's this one type of sock yarn, which I really like, which is a little more plump. It's a two ply. And that's what my BFL is, is that type of yarn. Um, and then a lot of the other types of sock yarn out there are a thinner um, yarn with more plies. I'm not sure how many plies it has, possibly eight. I don't really know, I'm just making that up. But it's a smoother, less bouncy, kind of thinner sock yarn. And both are really, really popular, but it's just interesting to me how they make a pretty, I mean, it's a slightly different fabric, but it's still a different fabric. So both of these socks were knit on the same needles with the same stitch count. And this one is definitely more dense than this one. And you probably can't see it, but I can definitely feel it. Um, I love both, but it's just, it's just fun to pay attention to that kind of stuff. I don't know. They look really good together, right? Um, so yeah, heel flap and gusset again, which is my favorite. These I did my more traditional toe that I like to do, which is a rounded toe where I do more, um, like a hat decrease and then I kitchener at the end before I get to a point. So, and I like both toes. There's that. Two socks out of here. My next couple of FOs are some dishcloths. They're actually washcloths. These are washcloths. I use them for my daughter Lucy's baths. And I made two of them. So I was working on this one in the last episode, and this is, I used the slant dishcloth pattern by Knit Picks. Um, well, it's by a designer whose name I don't know, but I will put it here. And it was released in Knit Picks, I think the 52 Weeks of Dishcloths collection. And I used Knit Picks Dishy Yarn, which is their worsted weight cotton yarn. And it's great, it's just garter. And the idea behind this pattern, I really like this pattern for making squares. I kind of, it, it's kind of my go-to if I have to make a square, even like a blanket square or something like that. Um, you cast on at a point and then you just do a bunch of increases until you decide you're done. And then you start doing a bunch of decreases. And it's really easy to tell how big it's going to be because you create one whole side by doing that. And... I think I did it smaller than the pattern called for. I just did it until I was happy with the size. And um, yeah. So <laughs> the next one, I used the same pattern, but I did this one in seed stitch. And it's great. It's also Knit Picks Dishy. Uh, the colorways are not in my head or written down. So I am not going to tell you what they are, but it's a teal and a red. I'll probably put them down here. So this is awesome. I have two more washcloths for Lucy. I like them. Okay, my next FO is my last FO. And this one is the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Mae Martinson. And I knit this in Knox, oops, it's inside out. I knit, it does I, you can't tell. <laughs> I knit it in Knox Yarn Co. Uh, her Mars sock base in the Bifrost colorway. And this yarn is so pretty, I love it. 
It's very pastel with black speckles and it came out really great. So this is a bralette and I don't necessarily know how or where I'm gonna wear it. I don't think I'm gonna actually wear it as like a top because you know you can wear it. I've seen people wear it as like crop top and it's a crop top and it's really cute. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's how I'm gonna wear it. I don't know how I'm gonna wear it. Um, but it fits and I like it. It was really fun to knit. Um, it was really easy and really quick. It hardly took any yarn at all. I actually have the leftovers some, oh, they're right here. Here, I have the leftovers for both my socks and the bralette right here. And I think they actually look really good together. Isn't that pretty? I should do something with these. Anyway, these are the leftovers for the socks. This is how much I had left over from this bralette. Uh, I haven't weighed it, but it's way more than half the skein. So that's pretty awesome. I have a ton of this left over to use for something else, and it's just the best. So the construction of this thing is really cool and really clever, and like I said, it was really fun in it and super quick. It is some big fat ribbing as the main patterning. And then you've got your shaping right here. You do increases and decreases. And then you do this really cool double I-cord strap. And I've never done this kind of double I-cord before. And it was really interesting. And I liked it a lot. And I really like the effect. It's a, it makes it a really wide I-cord. Um, and you have the option of doing regular straight back straps or a cross back strap and I did the cross back one. I definitely had to do some experimentation with how long to knit these straps. Um, she gives you an idea in the pattern of how long to knit them but ultimately you need to try it on and see if the length of your straps is going to work and what you end up doing is you knit them from the front and then you do a three needle bind off. to attach them to the back. So it's a little tricky to see if the length is gonna work when you're just trying it on and you've got this loose strap with a needle on it and you're trying to like pull it into your back and like <laughs> see if it's long enough. And I did that and, um, and I thought it was long enough based on that whole finagling thing. Um, and so I did a three needle bind off and it turns out they were not long enough and it's just hard to tell. So I did the three needle bind off and had to unpick it, which isn't a big deal because it's like eight stitches or six stitches or something like that. So I definitely had to do that a couple of times before I got the length right, but I eventually did and it was ultimately pretty simple to do that. So I will try this on for you now. So here it is on, <laughs> it is really, really cute and it fits really pretty well. Um, so there it is. And my favorite part is definitely the back, the cross straps in the back, I think are a really nice option. And I just think it looks really cool. So we'll see, I don't know exactly how or where I'm gonna wear this, but um, it was fun and I really like that I tried it. And I'm really glad I got to use this yarn because it is beautiful. Okay, back into some clothes. That's better. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that was the Ripple Bralette. And I highly recommend that pattern if you're into that kind of thing. And she also has some really cute uh, crop tops that are actual tops. <laughs> She's got the ripple crop, which is the same kind of ribbing patterning with sleeves. And that's really cute. And I don't know, her patterns are really, really cool. And they're really kind of unique. And they're the kinds of patterns when I look at the pattern itself, I don't feel that drawn to it. But then I see it on a bunch of people who have made these patterns. And I end up loving every single one of them. Um, she's got some new designs coming out too. I would recommend following her on Instagram. I really like her as a designer. So is that it for that? It was a great knit. It was super quick and I'm actually considering making another one but longer so that it's just like a tank top instead of a bralette. Uh, I've seen people do that and it's super 
duper doable. So that's an idea. We'll see. On to whips. I don't have that many whips because I've been working on all of those finished objects I had. But I do have a couple living in my Cats with Antlers bag, which is the very first project bag I ever made myself, and it's super wonky, and it has a hot pink zipper, is a pair of Rose City Rollers Littles Edition. So I am knitting these for my daughter Lucy, who is just about 10 months old, and she has two pairs of socks, and they're both, like, store-bought socks. She's had both of these pairs of socks her whole life, and <laughs> one of them is a little too small, but she still wears them, and one of them is too big, but she still wears them. So that's kind of how we roll around here, and I need, she just needs more socks. I need to make her more socks. I've made her a few pairs in the past, but she keeps growing out of them, and I can't uh, stretch them out the way you can store-bought socks, so... Here we go, little teeny Row City Rollers. I am using some mini skeins that I got in a mini skein swap a very long time ago. I got uh, a whole little collection of um, some sock yarns like Regia and Opal and Shock and Meyer or whatever. Those like really like German kind of maybe Italian, I don't know, Saki Sock Yarns. Um, and so I'm using some of those and I picked up one of these teeny mini skeins and I was like, this is enough for a pair of Rose City Rollers for a baby. It totally wasn't. So I had to Frankenstein some in together. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it would be, but I ran out like really quick, or at least I got to half of the little mini skein really quick. And so I decided to switch. So the first one that I used is this one. Regia. And the second one that I switched to is this one. And I know that this one is Drops Fable. And then the last one that I'm using is not a mini skein. I just had this as leftovers. And this is Regia, whatever that is. So the first ball is this. It's the striped brown and different colors. And then the second one is right here. And then the third one is from here down. So that's how far I am. Not much farther before I'm going to start the toe. I really like how the heel flap looks in this striped yarn. And the Rose City Rollers is a great pattern. It's by Mara Catherine Briner. And it's a free sock pattern for kids and babies. And it's just a rolled stockinette cuff with a heel flapping gusset and it's kind of what I use for all of Lucy's socks um, just kind of for the numbers and I have been really enjoying the rolled cuff instead of a ribbed cuff for her so these are coming along good I'm knitting them on a size zero like I have been with most of my socks and I'm doing the 9 to 12 month size which assumes she has a four and a half inch foot, I think, or something like that. I haven't actually tried them on her yet, which is kind of why I'm hesitant to start the heel because I wanna make sure I get the length of the foot right. So that's how those are coming along and I like them. I really enjoy working with that type of sock yarn. It's nice. Okay, my other whip <laughs> is uh, living in my Sugar Tots Fox Project bag. And this is the Floricardi. I have been working on this thing for a pretty long time. It is a pattern by Carrie Bostick Hogue and it was in Making Magazine issue one. I am using some Sincere Sheep yarn in the Vernal base, which is silk and linen. It's a lace weight and it's in the Aegean colorway. So here's the yarn. I had one skein of this, and I'm getting down to the middle. I'm gonna have plenty to finish this thing. I'm almost done. I wanna be done so bad. 
kind of done knitting this thing, you guys. So here it is. It is a bottom up short sleeved cardigan and it's lace weight. It's meant to, I guess I don't know what it's meant to be knitted. I'm knitting it in linen and silk. So it's like a really lightweight little short kind of cropped breezy little cardigan, you know, little summertimey thing. And it's bottom up. You have this garter hem and it's just stockinette for most of it, except for the side or the front panels are this lace, which is a really simple, really quick and easy, just little lace panel on each side and really easy to do. And then it's the type of thing where you split for the sleeves, you work on the front. So I've got this front and this front done. And then I picked up for the back and I'm working on that. Um, I'm almost done with the back. So once I do that, I'll just have to join the fronts for the shoulders. And then there's a little bit of seaming just under the sleeve hole where there's like sleeve increases. So you increase on the panels on the back and then you seam that together and then you have the armhole. So your sleeve is kind of built into the body. Um, and then I'm mostly done. You're supposed to also just after it's seen together, pick up around the armholes for I think a few bands of garter, I think. Uh, so I'm so close to being done, but I am seriously so sick of working on this. And it's not the pattern. The pattern is wonderful and pretty fun. It's the yarn. Ugh, I just can't, I just can't do it. It's that same old thing with me that I talk about all the freaking time is I can't handle all the little floopies. It's just so annoying to work with for me. I'm just like so irritated. And like I had a cold last week. So having that kind of stuff like go up your nose and into your lungs, you know, cause you're just breathing it. It just doesn't help. And it I'm over it. I don't want to work on this anymore, but I'm so close to being done. I actually really thought I was going to be done in time for this episode, but I wasn't. I was kidding myself. I was totally kidding myself. Um, but I'm done with all the lace parts and I just have a couple more inches of stockinette left. And I really like how this yarn is knitting up color wise. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's tonal. So there are just little bits of it that are lighter than other bits. So you end up getting these like shots of lighter blue throughout the whole thing. It's like a kind of a sea foam blue green kind of color. And it feels really nice. And I think it's going to be really great to wear. Um, my beef with it is just for knitting it. Whenever I knit it, make something with yarns like this that bother me, they never bother me in the garment. They only bother me when I'm knitting it. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I've got the ends of the fronts on just some waist yarn. This is actually that cat sandwich fibers that I had handy because I had just finished the socks. <laughs> and what I like to do, I never really know if it's necessary or not until I get there because I often don't read ahead in the pattern and really prepare myself. Um, I'm a go with the flow kind of girl. So what I like to do anyway, just in case, is leave a really long tail of yarn at the end of something like this, just in case I'm doing like a three needle bind off or if it's in the right spot for seaming, that way I don't have to weave in an end and introduce a new piece of yarn to do that. Um, not only is it nice because that's one less, that's like two less ends to weave in, it's also nice in my opinion because and I don't know how sound this logic is, it's just in my head, it feels good, is that instead of there being two open ends that are woven in, which is a secure way to do it, obviously, it's how we weave it, it's how we secure our ends, but instead of having those ends, your, your, your three needle bind off or your seam or whatever is a part of the, of the sweater. You know, it's a part of the knitting. It flows from knitting into the seam. That way it just feels like it's a little, uh, what's the word? Not more structured, not stronger, but it feels a little more cohesive to me. And 
it, it just, it's a feeling I get. It feels more cohesive and I like that. So even though I don't know if this yarn is gonna be in the right spot for my seam or my three needle bind off or whatever, um, it's there in case I need it. And I really like doing that for stuff like that when I have to have something on hold and then I'm gonna go back later and pick it up. So I've got one of those on each side where I broke my yarn. And that's pretty much it for this thing. I'm so close to being done. I am using a size US 5 needle on my Lick It Interchangeable short tip set. I'm enjoying them. They're great. I'm done talking about this now because it's making me feel congested just holding that thing. <laughs> That's all my whips. Um, yeah, I've had sweaters on the mind. I have not frogged back my Virginia yet, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that right away, which I should, I totally feel like I want to and I should, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that or cast on a different sweater or top now that I'm almost done with this one. I'm considering doing the Ranunculus by uh, the designer's name is something. Midori Knits? It's on the screen. Um, that's a really neat sweater that uh, I don't know much about it, but it looks like it is offered in one size and you can knit it at a variety of different gauges. She like suggests that you knit it anywhere between a lace weight yarn and an Aran weight yarn. And the effect you get and the size you get is different depending on what you do, what gauge you knit it at. So I'm considering making one of those out of some light fingering weight Julie Aslin yarn that I have. It's called Nurtured Fine. And um, I only have one skein of it and it's like eight, hundred yards or something like that. It's a light fingering lace weight. So I'm considering making that. It's just like a cropped kind of short sleeve thing and I'm pretty into that idea right now of making like smaller lighter tops that are cropped and maybe short sleeved or something to wear over dresses like the one I'm wearing now which is a good segue into sewing. I made a dress. <laughs> I made the what is it? The Stasia, Stasia, I'm not sure, dress by So Liberated. And I'm so excited that I made this. It is kind of my dream dress. So now that we're here, we're into sewing, let's stand up and show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is the Stasia dress. That's what I'm going with, the Stasia. And it's a skater style dress, and it's knit in, I'm sorry. It is sewn in Jersey stretch fabric and I love it so much. So I kind of wish I could show you like the whole thing, you know, cause it's just so awesome. Let me see, can I do this? Can I, oh, I know what to do. Hold on. So if you've ever wondered what I use next to my chair as like a table, it's a fanny lifter. Have you guys ever seen these? <laughs> this is some kind of exercise equipment thing from, I'm guessing the 80s. I found it at a thrift store probably 15 years ago and I bought it because I think it looks rad and I use it as like an end table or like, a, I use it as just like a thing to stand on or a thing to put things on and it's super movable and it's got layers. So I can make it whatever height I want. It's called a fanny lifter, and if you look up YouTube videos for fanny lifters, you can see a sweet workout that I could do with this, and I've actually tried it. I've done the fanny lifter workouts. It's just like a step thing, and multi-purpose awesome thrift store stuff. Anyways, I'm going to stand on it right now. There we go. So this is it in its entirety. It has pockets. What? Okay, now I gotta put them back in. Sorry, hold on. And I love the length of it. I love the swing of it. It's great. It is a little bit longer in the back than it is in the front, which I will talk about later. There is a reason for that. That is not a good one, but whatever. And 
it's awesome I love it so much it's got a scoop neckline and also a scooped back okay let's sit down wait first I'll show you the fabric up close so that's the fabric pretty bitchin right yeah okay so I made the size zero, which is the smallest size, and they recommend some negative ease. So the bust size for this version is a 30, and I'm a 32, which that's my actual bust measurement, and it fits so good. Um, it fits really perfectly, I, I love it. The really cool thing about this pattern is that it comes with different versions, like a lot of sewing patterns do. So this is super versatile and I can do it with these short sleeves or I can do sleeveless or three quarter sleeves. There's also a maxi length skirt version and a top, which I plan on making. I love this dress so much that I wanna make it again and I have the fabric to do it. I bought this fabric um, a long time ago along with a few other different jerseys and I got two yards of each and I was always kind of worried that I, that wasn't going to be really enough to make anything good like a dress or something but this pattern I think called for two and a half yards for this version and I got away with two yards and I'm pretty proud that I'm that's something I'm pretty good at is like fabric economy where I can pretty much usually get away with using less fabric than called for because I'm really uh, pushy about finagling my pattern pieces onto my fabric to make them all fit because I don't want to buy more fabric than I need. But anyway, the point is I have other fabrics and I'm really excited that I have different options because I can make different versions of this dress and still make it over and over again and they can all be slightly different. So that's really cool. This is definitely an issue as is as it is with other dresses and tops that I've made in this style so I mean oh well I'm okay with it maybe I'll end up figuring out how to fix that one day but <laughs> so anyway the fabric on this is really awesome I feel like it's kind of like space engineering kind of look looking like it I don't know it reminds me of like Star Wars or like Tron or something like that but I really really like it um, something I like about this pattern is that it's kind of got a V at the front um, which is more or less pronounced on some people's and I think it's a really nice little detail um, it's got a really cool neckline that I'm pretty proud of what else it's got pockets these pockets are so great they're huge they're like super deep pockets. Now, sewing this thing, I definitely made mistakes as I usually do. Uh, I haven't sewn a garment in quite a little while and I have the tendency to assume that I know what I'm doing and do it and then I'm like, oh wait, I did that wrong, so I have to go back. So there was some unpicking, there was some uh, unfortunate cutting mistakes that I was able to fix. Um, I don't know how this happened. I didn't notice it when it did happen, but somehow I noticed it when I was pinning the pieces together. I cut the front skirt pieces shorter, like an inch and a half shorter than the back skirt pieces. I have no idea how that happened, but it did. Uh, so what I decided to do is to kind of, um, true the back pieces up at the edges to the length of the front pieces so the back is just a little longer than the front which I think is a really fortunate mistake because I actually really like that look in skirts a lot and I'm really happy that it happened that I was able to do that because I think it looks really cool and also I'm very happy that it didn't happen the other way around because then I wouldn't have been able to fix it like that I would have just had to make the whole thing shorter um, so that was interesting. I don't know how that happened. I sewed this dress on my a sewing machine, 
which is a Janome 2212, and I love my sewing machine. I purchased it probably seven or eight years ago, and I bought it online without having tried it before, and I am eternally happy with my purchase. I feel like I made the right choice. It's such a good machine. Uh, the reason why I ended up going with it because was because the reviews online were really great. I did a lot of research and I found pretty much what I was looking for, which to me was like a unicorn. I didn't think I was gonna find this, but it was something that was considered to be a really good quality machine, a really solid machine at like the lower price point. So it was kind of like the best of the worst, right? The worst is bad. I shouldn't, it, it, the best of the cheap, maybe, I don't know. But it's a great machine. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's really solid. It runs really good and it doesn't feel flimsy. It doesn't feel shaky or janky and it's just held up so great. And for me, all I really need is a simple machine. It doesn't have a lot of the options that maybe other more expensive or more professionally sewing machines might have but it has a zigzag stitch which is what i use to sew jersey and it works out great something that i was pretty proud of myself for was that so liberated the pattern that i used doesn't hold your hand and walk you through everything the way tilly and the buttons patterns have do. Um, Tilly and the Buttons is a pattern company that I've sewed, sewn quite a few patterns from, and they're great as a beginning sewing pattern because it tells you exactly every single thing you need to do. It tells you steps and it tells you what you need to do between steps. And that was invaluable to me as a beginner sewist. I'm still, I still consider myself a beginner sewist. But since I made so many Tilly and the Buttons patterns, I was able to do things while making this that I don't think I would have otherwise done. For example, and I mean, this seems so basic, but it's not something I would have done. This pattern tells you to like, you know, it gives you all the instructions and it tells you to sew a seam and then it moves on to the next step and it doesn't tell you to like press that seam open. And that's the kind of thing that the Tilly and the Buttons patterns did tell you to do. And that's why I knew to do it. I would not know to do that otherwise. So to me, I was pretty proud of myself when I was going through this pattern and I was sewing it and I was about to move on to the next step and I was about to like sew the bodice onto the skirt, right? And then I was like, but wait a minute, I never pressed the seam for the skirt. I better do that first. And I was just like, a bam. I just like know what I'm doing. <laughs> I was pretty excited about that. Um, but the Sew so Liberated pattern uh, that I worked from for this dress was really great. It was really simple. It was only like two pages long and it's just such a simple, such a simply constructed dress that it was really great and really enjoyable to put together. Um, I think from beginning to end, like from getting my pattern and starting to cut it out until I was trying it on and it was over, probably about four hours. Um, but I did take, you know, breaks here and there. So it was, to me, relatively quick. It could have been quicker if I hadn't made mistakes. Like I said, if I hadn't had to like unpick seams and like recut things, I think it would have been quicker. But it was great. I really enjoyed making this dress. And like I said before, I really want to make more. Um, Something that I used for this dress and a few other patterns that I think is a really cool service is um, a print an online printing service called PDF Plotting. It's pdfplotting.com. And I learned about this from Emily of the Fibertown podcast. On an episode a long time ago, she mentioned that that's what she used. And I always remembered that and I finally used it. So it's pretty much an online company where you can send them your files of sewing patterns and they're used to working with sewing patterns and they'll print them for you large format and send them to you in a roll um, which to me is invaluable because something that stops me from sewing is having a digital pattern and having to print out the pattern on regular size paper tape it together and then cut it out that 
it's just like a mood killer for me. Like it, I, I, I don't think I'm ever going to do it again. I do not like doing it. I really dislike it. So being able to send it off to them and have them mail me a giant piece of paper that I had just had to cut out the pieces from was so good. Um, it was really cheap, but the thing is, is that there's a minimum order. So you have to have like a few different patterns that you're sending them to really make it worth it. Um, what I ended up doing was I think setting them four different patterns that each had like two large pages in them and I think I spent about $16 it's something like an $8 minimum but then shipping's really expensive it's like $8 so if you look at it overall I think I spent about $16 to print out four maybe five patterns and to me that's good and I know that's good because this one time I decided to do this, but send it to Kinko's or FedEx office or whatever the F they are now. <laughs> so I took um, one of my sewing patterns. I had them print it out for me on their large scale, just black and white printer. And for one pattern, which was not that huge a piece of paper, it was $16. And when I, at, when I went to pick it up and like pay for it, I was just like, And also they gave me a really hard time about like copyright and I'm like, but I bought the pattern. This is what it's meant for. Like, this is why the file exists so that I can get it printed. And they're like, but no, it's copywritten. And they... it was a huge hassle and it was really expensive. So this was a way better option and I'm pretty excited about it now. I have the metamorphic dress that I also got printed and a couple other patterns that I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but I have it right here. This is how it came in this giant priority mailbox and this is my roll of patterns. Actually this one right here is this dress that I've rolled up the pieces for and rubber band together. So I thought I would tell you guys about that because it was really great. I had a good experience. It's a little bit of a pain to upload your files because it's kind of confusing the way they do it. If one pattern has two different pages you have to select the, you can't just like upload your file and say print it whatever size it is. You have to figure out the size like in inches or centimeters or whatever that your file will be once it's printed and then choose that and then up your load your file to that. And if it's only the first page that's that size, you have to like say page one. And then anyway, it took me like two days to figure out how to place the order. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, but. Uh, I was a little confused, but I eventually figured it out and they say if you have any questions you can just email them and the shipping was super fast I got it within like two days But anyway In case that helps anybody I really loved it and That's about it for my Stasia dress. I love it. I love it so much And I'm really happy I made it Okay Moving on to shop update, I have the hand dyed yarn company called Moonstone Dye Works. If you didn't know, I'm the dyer behind that. And I have been not dyeing that much yarn lately. Um, not for any good reason, it's just been busy. So I was really excited to be able to get back to the dye pots a couple days last week and I have created a new mini skein set that I am gonna be adding to the shop tomorrow, which is Friday, May 24th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. So here it is. This is the Moon collection. It's called The Moons. And um, this is a mini set collection that I created based on different moons in our solar system. Um, as I mentioned last week, I watched, I watched the entirety of the uh, YouTube Crash Course Channel's astronomy series. So I got a little obsessed with space for a little while and I got a little obsessed with other planets' moons and I came up with this collection. So these are all inspired by the moons of other planets and I, with the help of my cheat sheet because I'm not an astronomy expert yet, will tell you what they are. This one is Triton and Triton is a moon of Neptune. Then we have Callisto, which is a moon of Jupiter. 
Then we have Enceladus, Enceladus, which is a moon of Saturn, and I could very well be pronouncing that moon wrong. I don't know. This is Phobos and Deimos, which are the moons of Mars. And then we have Io, which is the fiery volcanic moon of Jupiter. So that's the collection. These are the moons, and I'm really excited about it. Um, so I will have this set available on a Stellina merino nylon base and also a merino nylon base. They're all fingering weight. They're all that kind of plump, bouncy two-ply sock yarn. And if you are interested, I hope to see you there. Again, it's tomorrow, Friday, May 24th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And I love them. I hope you enjoy them too, if you are interested. the moons. And I do hope to be getting back to the dye pots a little more in the upcoming weeks, so hopefully we'll have, we will have more yarn being uploaded into the shop soon. And you can find the shop at moonstonedyeworks.com. A link is in the description box below. Okay, is that it? I think that's mostly it. Um, I'll talk a little bit about favorites, about a couple things that I've been into these past couple weeks. Um, I don't think I'm going to do another book segment right now because seriously, I don't know what it is right now, but I have been like flying through books. So I have read a lot of books and I don't really want to do another 20 minute segment again. So I'm just going to tell you what I'm reading right now. Um, I am reading... The, and I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong as well. I think it's The Penelopeid by Margaret Atwood. And that was at the recommendation of a viewer. Thank you so much for recommending that. I'm so happy I picked that book up. Uh, so The Penelopeid is about Penelope of Odysseus and Penelope of the Odyssey. And uh, that's a Greek myth which is really cool. And this is why she recommended it to me is because I finished reading Cersei. I finished reading Cersei, um, which is another uh, character in that story. Uh, and Penelope was a major character in Cersei. And so it's really neat to be reading a Penelope story now told from another female perspective. Margaret Atwood is an author that I love. Probably my very favorite trilogy of all time, which is the Mad Adam trilogy, was written by her. And I really like her books. She took, she doesn't usually write about mythology, but she took this character and wrote a book about her. And it's so good so far. I love it so much. I highly recommend that if you are into uh, mythology or Margaret Atwood. <laughs> the other book that I am currently reading is called Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adayemi. And this is another book about mythology. So uh, this tells, tells the tale of an African myth um, of pretty much this land where there was once magis and magic. Magis are people who the god bestows magical powers on to kind of represent them among humanity. And it's about this time where a king pretty much ended magic, and now we don't know yet, but we think magic's kind of coming back. So it's an African myth. It's a YA book, and I think it's going to be part of a trilogy. I'm not sure, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I am so into mythology right now, probably because the other thing that I've been doing is watching a Crash Course series since I finished the astronomy series. I started watching the one on mythologies, world mythologies, and I'm enjoying it. I'm not quite enjoying it as much as the astronomy one, um, but it's fun. And myth, mythology is just something that I'm really into. I'm really interested in. I love reading different accounts of these stories. And I really like this crash course 
because it's introducing me to a lot of different stories all at once. It's very dense in like its stories and its characters. And um, it's really fun to be reading two books right now. Both are based in mythology. Uh, it's also really interesting to me. It's I feel like all of my interests are kind of tied together and as I go deeper into my interests I realize how they're tied together and it's just really cool because like I just finished this course on astronomy and now I'm really into mythology and there's so much connection between astronomy and mythology because when humanity first started studying the stars the stars were part of their mythologies they were part of all that and so we named stars based on mythologies and those names stuck so now in modern astronomy like everything in the sky almost except for you know now we have stuff named like m1742 a17 <laughs> most of the stars and the constellations and star groups that we know that were named a long time ago are all named based on mythologies and it's just a really cool connection that is bringing me a lot of like like that little like spark of like pleasure that you get what is that called there's a name for it right like that little rush of like happy hormones <laughs> you get when as i'm going deeper into this stuff and i'm making these connections and i just love it so much so anyway, I've been really into mythologies lately with my novels and with the Crash Course thing that I'm watching. And that's been awesome. So I can recommend that if you're into that kind of thing, those two books and that Crash Course series. Um, the host is fun. He's definitely, I don't know if, I'm guessing this kind of quality goes um, across all of Crash Course hosts because the two that I've seen are pretty humor oriented and this guy's definitely um he kind of hams it up a lot which is i like it it's cheesy but i like it he's 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 a charming person and he's got this little sidekick who's tote from egyptian mythology and they're pretty funny together all right that's it. I'm going to leave you there. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you're interested in some lovely moon-themed yarn, check out Moonstone Dyeworks tomorrow or later. I'm sure it won't sell out right away, so if you missed the uh, kind of update time, don't worry. Check. It probably will still be there. I dyed a lot of it. And join in on the make-alongs if you're interested. Check out the Ravelry group. If you liked the video, please feel free to like and subscribe and have fun and stay awesome. Bye, everybody.